Ken Osmond passed away this week at the age of 76. And of course, Ken is immediately recognizable as his signature role, Eddie Haskell from Leave it to Beaver. And with his passing, I thought I'd share my memories of Ken, specifically how the neighbors, when I was a kid growing up, used to wrongly, unfairly call me an Eddie Haskell and how I got to tell Ken about it. Well, it all starts back in fifth grade when I met my best friend at the time, Jimmy Sikorsky. Me and a lot of the friends would all spend a lot of time over at his house. And as a kid, I was a bit precocious and uh, interested in a lot of things that a lot of adults considered above or beyond most kids. And so, uh, and also maybe because I grew up in a single uh, uh, household, a single mom, um, I just became very used to, you know, uh, uh, befriending adults. A lot of times when I was a kid, my mom would drop me off at a, for a school function or baseball and say, you know, at, look for Mr. So-and-so and he'll tell you where to go. And um, so uh, I was very used to that and very conversational, a lot more than most kids were with adults. Uh, I'd sometimes I'd stay after school and talk to my teacher about stuff, questions I had that had nothing to do with the lesson plan. And so um, I remember when uh, we first uh, I first started hanging out with Jimmy, and I remember a bunch of us would be in the kitchen, you know, getting snacks or something and sodas, and um, uh, his mom would be around, you know, uh, doting on us and such. And you know, then we'd get ready to go jump back into whatever action figures or movie we were watching, and Sometimes I'd stay and and talk to his mom or his dad or his older brothers or whatever. And I remember uh, when, like, the first time I did that with his mom, she's like, was all suspicious on me. She was like, what are you, what are you getting at? What do you want? You've already gotten, you know, a cookie and some soda pop. Are you looking for more cookies or whatever? And I was like, no, I was just asking a question. So she was so surprised by that. Um, because it was a little bit aberrant behavior. It wasn't a, a normality uh, with kids our age. And so, you know, but it didn't phase me. And so I kept on going like I normally do. And she started picking up the phrase of calling me Eddie Haskell, saying that I'm suspicious. I think you're trying to, you know, work some angle. And I was completely befuddled by it. So it it actually kind of caught on a little bit. I was called for a brief time by, you know, some people that my family found out about it or whatever. And it always bugged me because it, the whole thing was a mistaken thing. It was, I was trying to, you know, engage. And just because I was a kid and the other person was an adult. But, um, so I did get called Eddie Haskell for a while. And, and of course I, you know, uh, uh, watched the show. I grew up in the uh, late seventies, mainly in the eighties, but, uh, leave it to beaver was a mainstay in television reruns back in the day. And, um, I, I guess it still is. So everybody knew leave it to beaver. Everybody knew Eddie Haskell. And I actually did kind of embrace it a little bit because the one thing, I mean, Eddie Haskell was a jerk. He was known for, you know, always, you know, trying to pull something on someone. Um, obviously the parents, but a lot of times even Wally or the Beaver. And so that part was like, that irked me because I was, you know, uh, coming from such a more genuine place. But what I did like about Eddie Haskell was that he was comedy gold. And I've loved comedy ever since I was a kid. And and over the years, I've gotten uh, a chance in my free time to write some comedy for, you know, local theater and film projects. And so I've always loved comedy. And so that I did not mind because Eddie Haskell was easily pound for pound the funniest character or element of uh, Leave it to Beaver. Every time he was on screen... He would have you laughing. And so um, a little bit of a love-hate feeling there with how uh, uh, Mrs. Sikorsky always used to call me Eddie Haskell. But uh, it was kind of funny and fitting in a way because he was he was always quick-witted and smart on his feet. And, and I kind of was as well. So anyways, flash forward to years later. Um, I had just moved from Minnesota down to San Diego, and I was driving home from work, and on the radio, this local radio station had uh, uh, Jerry Mathers, the Beaver, and Ken Osmond, Eddie Haskell, both on the show, and or maybe it w might have been Wally and Eddie, I forget, um, but it, it, I remember Eddie, because that's who I, it just, I lit up, I was like, no way, Eddie Haskell, so... 
uh, I, I rushed home because I don't think I had a cell phone even then. Uh, this was like, you know, 2001 or something. And I rushed home and I called in and I got to tell Ken Osmond the story about how the neighbors always called me Eddie Haskell. And, you know, I'm sure he's heard of a million uh, stories like that because uh, uh, Eddie Haskell, the character, you know, became so iconic and so representative. It was a touchstone in the culture for that type of, you know, wiseacre kid. And, um, and it was funny to be able to tell the real Eddie Haskell that story. And, and he chuckled and, and, you know, said, Oh, I'm sure they meant it in, in jokes. And of course they did or whatever. But, uh, uh, so that was really cool. I, I got to, to talk to him. And, uh, I mean, I, I really wish I would have uh, seen him at some conventions. I'm sure he, uh, did some LA conventions had I uh, gotten up to there more frequently. Um, but it was cool to be able to talk to him. Um, the show itself, I kind of also had a little bit of a love hate relationship with, I mean, I liked it as a kid. There's so many things that were, um, I mean, you look back, it's so quaint now, but still so many of the things the kids going through, uh, at school or whatever, his parents or whatever. So, uh, uh, universal that that show just really worked and despite its quaintness and you know I grew up in the like I said the late 70s and and mainly in the 80s and it was a changing time and you know those so those look especially quaint from my perspective especially again growing up in a, a single household was uh uh it was really strange because you looked at these shows like uh, leave it to beaver and father's knows father knows best and and it was kind of like, you know, that was the idealized version of the American nuclear family. And, you know, you watch those and then it's clear. It's like, oh, that's not what I ha what I am. You know, I'm not the idealized version of a nuclear family kid, I guess, or whatever. So, but I always loved the show uh, for, for what I got out of it and, and the times I watch it. And I watch it again every now and again. And I always loved Eddie Haskell. Um, actually, kind of all the actors in that show we're all pretty cool actors. Hugh Beaumont, the mom, who I'm forgetting right now, Tony Dow, who played Wally, etc. Um, you know, they're all really good in the roles. It was a great show. It was it was an iconic show um, that was a lot of, of what uh, uh, aspirational 1950s America was what wanted to be. And 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 so it's really a, a kind of a cultural touchstone. And so um you know, it's really too bad that Ken was uh, typecast in that role and had difficulty acting. Uh, if you check IMDb, he did appear in roles um, into the, the uh, 60s and 70s, um, but eventually the, the parts were drying up and he quit and became a cop, which was pretty cool. And he actually was uh, injured in a shootout, and uh, I believe that ended his career, and he had to fight to get his pension, but... Uh, he did return to acting in the 90s um, and was on a, a, I know he did a cameo on Parker Lewis Can't Lose, which is kind of a cult classic uh, TV sitcom from the 90s. Wow. So, it, you know, and, and he did a few other roles around then that time as well. And so I just, it was cool to see him back. Uh, he was always seemed to be very well adjusted about uh, his situation specifically since it was a little bit tough being typecast and, and not being able to get the work that he would have wanted to. I mean, he had gotten into uh, show business at like the age of four. So in his you know early 20s to be, you know, starting to have a hard time finding work, that's got to be tough. And and he really took it with a plum and was a classy guy and he'll be missed. And so I just wanted to share my memory of Ken Osmond with you. And we'll see you here next time on Hero Journalism.